Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are looking at two extensions of the classical EMD method which add noise to the input data prior to decomposition to improve the mode allocation. In particular we are looking at the ensemble EMD and the noise assisted multivariate EMD which both use noise but in a different manner. The main objective of um, both methods is to enhance the decomposition process by reducing mode mixing. Mode mixing basically means that the decomposition into several modes is not accurately performed. You can observe such a behavior in the figure here on the right. So for example, the first and the second IMF contain more than a single dominant oscillation frequency but these should be separated into individual modes since they clearly represent different features. On the other hand, the oscillation of the second IMF between T equals 5000 and roughly 8000 has actually the same frequency as the oscillation in IMF1 at earlier and later time instants. So this oscillation was incorrectly split into two modes. Such, such behavior um, inhibits a precise analysis of the decomposed data and eventually compromises the physical meaning of the modes. Therefore, it is of utter importance to reduce or even better eliminate mode mixing. The approach stems from the analysis of white Gaussian noise that is decomposed by the EMD method. It was shown that the EMD essentially behaves like a dyadic filter bank when decomposing noise. That means that the resulting modes have identical Fourier spectra with double centered frequencies of neighboring modes. So if you properly scale the spectra of all modes, they collapse as shown in the bottom figure. And the basic idea is to impose such a behavior on the EMD process in general, such that the spectra of IMFs obtained from arbitrary data are similarly well separated. Then we do not face the issue that a single frequency is dominant in two different modes as we previously saw. There are basically two main routes to incorporate noise in the decomposition and reduce mode mixing. The ensemble EMD adds noise directly to the input data such that you perform the EMD with noisy data. And on the contrary, the multivariate um, EMD just uses additional variates of noise, so the original data is not altered but augmented with new variates. Let's first take a look at the ensemble EMD. Basically, the input data f of t is disturbed by random Gaussian noise w of t, which yields noisy input data. This is exemplarily shown in the right figure, where the original data is given in orange and the noisy data in blue. The noisy data is processed by the standard EMD method. And this procedure is repeated several times with newly generated random noise for each trial. And when a sufficiently large number of trials is performed, the IMFs of all trials are averaged. So statistically, uh, the noise cancels out and what's left are precisely separated modes whose sum matches the original undisturbed input data. However, there are some drawbacks to the ensemble EMD, which I like to address. First, you need a very, very high number of trials to completely remove the influence of noise from the IMFs. That means in reality, uh, you always have some residual noise in your results and to achieve a high accuracy, you face high computational costs. Another disadvantage is that the typical IMF characteristics might be lost during the averaging process so that the final IMFs might not possess the desired properties. And you probably also face the issue that different trials produce a varying number of total modes and there is no unambitious approach to perform the ensemble mean. So in summary, there are some severe drawbacks that, um, at least in my opinion, um, the method should be applied with great care. Um, the noise-assisted multivariate EMD is more promising as it preserves the original data and only appends new channels with random noise. 
That means that we do not have any artifacts of residual noise in the modes related to our original data. The modes related to the noise channels are neglected after the decomposition because uh, they are only relevant to impose the noise characteristics on the other variates during the decomposition. In addition, the noise-assisted MEMD is usually less expensive since we only perform a single trial. Of course, the costs increase with the number of variates you use. Let's take some exemplary data and apply the noise-assisted MEMD. In total, our input data consists of three channels. The first variate, G1, is a simple sine wave with a frequency of 1 Hz and an amplitude of 5 and is colored in blue. The second variate, G2, which is given in orange, starts with the same frequency, but suddenly changes to a higher frequency of 6 Hz at t equals 2.5. The amplitude is constant along the complete time span. The third uh, red signal, G3, starts with a sine wave of 6 Hz and an amplitude of 8, and at t equals 5, another sine wave is added to the um, data with a frequency of 12 Hz and an amplitude of 10. When we decompose this tree variate data with a standard MEMD algorithm without noise assistance, we obtain these IMFs. As I already said in my video about the MEMD, you can just use the MATLAB code provided by Professor Mandik. I put the link in the description box below. Here we observe severe mode mixing in all channels. So for example, the blue signal um, does only contain a single sine wave with constant parameters along the complete time span, but it is wrongly spread across several IMFs. For the orange data, we would expect one IMF containing the lower frequency wave and one IMF comprising the higher frequency wave um, with the separation at t equals 2.5. But again, the data is spread across more modes. And the same basically holds for the red data. But what happens when we append the data with random Gaussian noise prior to the decomposition? Can we reduce these severe mode mixing effects? In total, we define three channels uh, with random Gaussian noise possessing zero mean. We set the variance of the noise um, to 5% of the variance of the original data, which is, from my experience, a good choice. But you should definitely play around with this value to get a feeling of its influence on the decomposition of your own data. In the following, we successively increase the number of noise channels from 1 to 3 to see how the mode allocation changes. And for your own data, you should see some kind of convergence as you increase the number of noise channels. Okay, so let's see what happens when we use one channel of noise in addition to our data. Since the Gaussian noise varies randomly in time, it seems to contain very high frequencies such that the first IMFs are only noise-related modes. In the present example, IMFs 1 to 3 contain fine-scale noise, and the respective modes related to our actual data are just constantly zero, which is why I didn't show them. But for the fourth mode, containing the highest frequency of the sine wave inherent to G3, uh, the red data, um, it is correctly starting around t equals 5, but it is not a strictly periodic sine wave. We still see some mode mixing with respect to IMFs 5 and 6. The same happens uh, for the orange data, where IMF 5 and 6 should actually be a single IMF. And also the single frequency sign of the blue data is split into two modes, from which I didn't picture the ninth IMF due to a lack of space. However, if we uh, use two noise uh, channels, we observe a massive improvement of the mode assignment. While the lowest frequency that is contained in the blue and the orange data is still split into two modes, IMFs uh, 8 and 9, the lower frequencies uh, contained in the orange and the red data are actually accurately captured into individual IMFs. 
And due to the mode alignment property of the multivariate EMD, we can directly see that the orange and the red data contain the same frequency, which is captured in the 6 IMF. If we add another noise channel, so we have three noise channels in total, we can also improve the allocation with respect to the lowest frequency. It is now contained in the 9th IMF, and due to that, we also know that the blue and the orange data share this specific frequency. We still have some minor irregularities, for example at the boundaries or at the transition area at t equals 2.5 for the orange and t equals 5 for the red data, but overall the different oscillations are very well separated. We can clearly see along which time spans a specific frequency is contained in the data and we can also track which variates share the same frequency. We could probably even remove some of the irregularities if we play around with the noise variance value and the number of noise channels. Let me quickly show you the direct comparison between the MEMD results with and without noise assistance. On the left, you see the IMFs of two of the three variates when no noise is used during the decomposition. And on the right, you see the respective modes when we added three noise channels. Now, the great advantage of noise assistance is very obvious, I think. Um, as a side note, you can also use this approach uh, when you only have a single variate signal. You then create multivariate data by appending your data with noise variates and then simply use the MEMD. Hopefully I could help you out in understanding the purpose and the approach of using Gaussian noise within the EMD method. And as you saw, it is actually quite a simple approach, but it can make a huge improvement to your data decomposition and the subsequent analysis of the modes. Um, thanks for watching and as usual, if there are remaining questions, just let me know in the comments below. So see you next time. Bye!